Hey guys, it is Shoshi and we are live. It is Friday, yay. And I see a bunch of people are already watching. Yay, Fractino, Drene, You'll Never Know, Aira Arts, and Robosh76. So hello and welcome. And I, since I see a few German people in here, the Gates. <laughs> good evening everybody for everybody in Europe and good afternoon. To everyone in the US. As you can see, I have a new grow light on my plants in my vivarium, and it just happens to be like a UV, like red and blue, which make a weird kind of pink. What's really cool about it though is that it matches my, my overlays really nice, so it looks really perfect. <laughs> um, today we're gonna be painting Kingdom Death Watcher, so if that's something that interests you, stick around. We're gonna um, I'm going to show you what I've done already to paint him to prime and then how that's going to form the basis of how I'm going to complete him. So yeah, it's nice to see you too, Elio. Welcome. All right, let's, let's get going. Let's take a look at this and I will show you what I've done. So the first thing that I did to the watcher is I 
base coated him in, in black Steinle Res primer. Here, I'll get this over here. This is my, as you can see, it's messy. Steinle Res is one of my favorite primers, probably the only primer that I use. Then I went ahead and I got a different primer. So when I was at ReaperCon, I picked up a whole bunch of their colored primers. And this one is called Ebony Flesh. And you can see it's just this beautiful dark brown. And I aimed it over the black so that you could still see the black in there. And that's going to be, you know, the base of my, of his robes and everything. And then lastly, I took some white Steinle Res Primer. I got white and I sprayed that on all of the little all the little vines and all of the little lanterns that are going to have a glow effect. And what's nice is that you kind of start with your OSL and then we drop in our colors and our shadows and everything and then it's going to really pop. So that you can already see how it looks like it's glowing with the camera cuz the camera's all juiced up. All right, sounds good. I think it's getting warm here under these lights already, so I'm taking off my sweatshirt. And let's see, I've got Pro Acryl. I want to show you real quick. I did priming on all the models. So these are the models that I'm going to be painting. Probably not um, too many. Well, I really want to paint the Phoenix on camera at some point. Because look at that. How cool is he looking? I did the brown. Same thing with the brown over the black. And then I did some white on some of the areas that are going to be. Hey, Miniatures Den, how are you? Welcome. I wanted to thank you so much for that raid the other day. I know I thanked you then, but I want to thank you again. Um, so one other thing I did was I just um, put a little bit of a layer on some gaps and mold lines that I had. This is the Phoenix. And then you guys saw we also put together the Kingsman and the hand. So those two are, uh, are not other models we're going to be painting. But today, for sure, the Watcher. If we get time, we're going to get to one of the others, one of the other three models that I've got here. I'm going to stick these in my spray booth real quick. The hope there is not going to, hope he is not going to try being sneaky because all those lanterns are going to be noisy. Right. That's an interesting point. Well, he's really ethereal, so I don't know. Maybe he, I don't remember if he can phase out of stuff or not. I don't, we've never... We've never fought the Watcher in our game. Don't worry about it. You're doing well, chilling with your girlfriend. Hello, girlfriend. Ciao. Is that the right? I don't speak. I don't speak Italian, so I hope that's the right word. <laughs> All right, there we go. She says hello. Oh, nice. Okay, good. Um, what else are we gonna do? Okay. Oh, we have a giveaway today. I want to ask you which giveaway you'd rather have because I'm gonna save the other one my subscriber giveaway probably I'm thinking about so I've got this choice I've got this model right here it's the grudge it's not he's not super attractive right like he's like pretty burly but he's he's from Reaper got him because we demoed him um, on it's kind of like how two artists paint together and can paint in completely different styles me and Josh Davis did that so I got him and then I also have a sponsored um, actually, technically, they're both sponsored. This one's from Reaper. This one is from Red Grass Games. It's the ergonomic handle. And um, I just, I'm not going to open this, but I have another one over here. I have the prototype. Chow is good, and the pronunciation was great. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this is the, this is a prototype, of, and it's a 3D printed version of this guy, which is their final, final um, thing. And it comes with a little piece of, Sticky tack, which mine has lint. Of course it has lint. And so you just put a small model. I'm just gonna put, let's put, um, let's put this Reaper model on here. Oh no, sorry, Dark Sword. Ah, oh no, I think I broke him. I'm gonna have to glue him back. Ah, boo. <laughs> let's glue that back on. Maybe we can demonstrate the handle. You love the attitude on that miniature? Oh yeah, this one, he definitely has attitude. He's grumpy. He is definitely, I should have pinned this. All right, a little bit of super glue right there. Put the shield back on. What do I get? What do I get? There, perfect. 
Finally, someone with a nose bigger than mine. <laughs> I understand. I had a, you know what's funny is I had a big nose in middle school, and but I grew into it. But it was not easy. I understand. He does have a, a big honker, doesn't he? Beep, beep. And, uh, yeah, so which one would you guys rather have? You were the opposite. You, you, you grew up, but your nose got big with you, didn't you? Well, you know, I think it's better to have character than be boring looking. You know, everybody has their things. I ha I got, so <laughs> I'm just going to show you what I got. I got the fo the forehead from hell. I got, we call it a five head because you can put five fingers on it. I got my dad's forehead. That's why I wear bangs. <laughs> you had a very pretty boy face and then the face didn't grow, but the nose did. Oh, <laughs> either both. Okay. So how about this? I'm going to save this one for, for, well, let's see. Jeez. I'm going to save this one for my, for my sponsors, um, for the 16th. We do a, we do a, not sponsors, subscribers. We do a subscriber giveaway on the 16th. We're close to it. This is not going to work. I'm going to have to pin this. I don't know what I did to it. It's got globs of super glue on it now. Well, let's try another model. So you can see how this is supposed to work. This one should be better. This is another dark sword mini. So let's say I've got him on here and I can turn him round. And so I'm going to give this away for my subscriber subscriber giveaway. Oh, and the other nice thing, look at that. It sits up nice. You can sit that on your thing. Redgrass Games. If you, um, I, don't, I think I've got a code here if you want to buy one for yourself. Redgrass. That's my little affiliate link. It doesn't really give you a discount, but it does give me a little help, a little kickback. Just a small amount goes back to me and helps me support the stream. And where did my super glue go? Okay, right. All right, so let's get going on this watcher. Now, as you can see, I got overspray all over the place from the white. I've got a cover where I filled the gaps and scraped some mold lines. I know, you know, there's there's going to be some covering. The nice thing about Steinal Res is it is um, self leveling, so we can just get some of our brown Steinal Res ebony flesh. Sorry, not brown ebony flesh and just put it right on here. There we go. I love this color. Let me show it to you. Look at that. It's a beautiful brown. And what's nice about having colored primers is that it kind of speeds up the process by a lot because it'll stick to your model, especially if you've got, you know, tanks or rain or anything like that. It's going to speed things up a lot. I, all I'm going to do here is go back in and just touch up where I've got overspray all over the place and little speckles and stuff I'm going to cover as well. Yep, yep, yep. Some of this, um, some of this overspray I want to leave. If it, if it looks smooth, I'm going to leave it because eventually we're going to add our OSL effect. Off source lighting, I think that stands for that. Could be wrong. Because while I love Chimera, wait, wait, wait. Have you ever tried Golden Fluid? Yeah, I have. I have a couple, but I have, I have like a paint horror miniatures den. I have so much paint. <laughs> I know you've tried Chimera. I like Chimera, but I don't like how fast it dries in my house. Because, um, and I was told in in, in Italy, it doesn't dry fast because you don't have the you don't have a dry problem. My my basement gets really dry in the winter. But I'm I did keep them and I do have some golden fluids. I do really like them. They're you're wondering if golden were a bit less viscous. Oh yeah. Hmm. Viscous. So I would say the fluid golden fluid are Really similar. Let me see if I have a bottle somewhere here. Give me a second. I know I have some. No, no, no. I keep all my like miscellaneous paints kind of. Here's a golden. Oh, this is an old. 
that's not even a golden. What is that? Oh, here we go. So it turns out I don't actually have golden. I have these old airbrush colors, which I would just, I used to just paint with. They ended up, I think they discontinued the golden airbrush. Let's see how that looks. Let's see if we can paint with those. Be too. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, that's why. I mean, it never got opened. <laughs> Nope, come here, stay wet after two, three days on your palette. Yeah, see, I need a more humid environment to have them work for me. Amberdin, hello, how did I spend the KDM? Oh, I, I bought a lot of stuff for the KDM Halloween sale because it turns out that everything that I wanted, two of the things I wanted had came with new game content. I had to get that and then there was couple resins I had to get. I went ahead and got the um, Witch Disciple, Death High Girl. I got the Thrall, which he looks kind of cool if you ask me. Ah! All right, let's try. I'm, I think these are very similar. Yeah, that looks pretty. They're, this is an airbrush color. And I don't think they make these anymore. I got it on sale. Six dollars and thirty cents. Where can I paint on? Let's try a palette. <gasps> that's beautiful. Ooh, that's pretty. I need to get some of them goldens. Look at this. This is like a watercolor. So, ooh, holy crap! All right. I know where I can get some in town too. That's beautiful. That's a phthalo blue red shade. Lovely. I know. This is because it's 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 um it's opaque, but it's set for the airbrush. It, they're meant for airbrushing. Yeah, I like that. Considering I never used it, I should probably try. Maybe we can try to use some of that later on something else. I'll keep that on my palette. All right. Yeah, so I bought I bought the thrall. I bought a bunch of stuff. I spent about one hundred and thirty dollars on Kingdom Death, which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, back to the brown. The brown is boring compared to the blue. Clearly, you asked the wrong question. It should have been, "What didn't you get?" Oh, I did. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good point. I, what I didn't get in the sale was um any of the older figures that oh see that's covering that nice i have to cover these mold lines that i scratched off there we go lovely um i didn't get what else didn't i get i don't tend to buy the death high figures because i don't like that orange plastic but the witch of Disciple is just so dang cute. I got her. Um, everything else I have, oh my gosh. For the most part. Bad, huh? Okay. The nice thing about this is I can write off, um, but for me, but me being, wait. But being meant for airbrush means that they have more finely ground pigments, which is not bad if you're doing glazing. That's true. That is true. I'll have to look um, for the golden fluids. I had, like, I thought I had some, but I didn't, I didn't see. I did recently go through my, I had a teenager come over and work as my assistant and she rebottled some of my paints. And we also threw away a bunch of paints that I didn't use, so I don't know which pile that end, ended up in, but I had some goldens. Can't imagine that I would throw those away though. Cause like I said, I've had, I've had this for years and obviously I never even opened it, so. <laughs> Getting those little Areas covered that. See how it just covers right up? 
the nice thing about the Steinal Res is that it's so, got, got such great coverage that um, my Phoenix that had tiny little gaps in it, you know, it didn't even need really gap filling after I'd primed it because it was just nice. All right, I think, um, I feel like I need to put a thin amount. Let me see how this thins out. You try to do like a thin glaze over the white. That does, that's not terrible. I'm not hating that. I need to get Steinle stuff. I, I think, Amberton, who is the guy... Who are the people that made the European version of Steinal Res? I think we found out that there's somebody who makes Steinal Res, but in a different, it's a different name brand. But it's basically the same formula. And I thought Amberton knew who it was, but I could be wrong. Okay, right, just quick underneath there. Probably be a shadow. Now, okay, that looks nice and dark so far. We've got some good things going on. You know what I might try to do? Might try to use some of this blue, and I've also got some Winsor Newton Violet ink, if I can get this open. I might mix these together. Ooh. All right, let's see what happens when I mix these, the blue and the violet together. Ooh. Wow, that's ultramarine. That's such a pretty ultramarine color. Hmm. Okay. What happens if I mix a little bit of brown with that? Ooh. There's my shadow color. Pretty. If if issues opening ink every time I need to ask your girlfriend. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. Okay, so that's going to be my shade color. This It's got just enough purple in it. It's going to look cool. And it's not going to be super visible, but I like saturated shadows. I like my shadows not to just be a boring black. Black is one of the... If you're not painting black with colors... Black is one of the most boring colors. All right, I'm gonna do a little one brush blending here. Blot, blot, blot. I think my husband just got home from work. Kind of blend that and feather that out. Perfect. Yes, I'm streaming. <laughs> yeah? Is it? Oh, it is early. Oh my goodness, well, I. I'm a little early, guys. I feel really bad now. I'm probably streaming over somebody that I shouldn't be. Oh well. I'm sorry. I just had the urge. I was like, I gotta, I gotta get this done. I gotta get this commission done. Maybe we'll go extra long. <laughs> you won't tell. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. What's this heresy? Yes, you know what it is. <laughs> Being a dork. I think, uh... Ammo Mig is the one that sells the Steiner Res in Europe. Okay. Dioxazine purple. Get it? Yes. So we mixed so we mixed a couple things. We made a dioxazine purple sort of. We used thalo thalo <laughs> I can't talk. Thalo blue, red jade. We used a little bit of Windsor Newton Violet ink, which is like pure pigment, and we used a little bit of the Steinle Res Brown to mix, to mix this beautiful dark, dark color, which is lovely. Um, <laughs> Renee says, uh, yeah, Emma makes the one who said, yeah, Emma makes. Oh, what do you mean? What are you falling down the workshop games workshop cesspool? Tell me what that means. Does that mean you're getting into games workshop a lot? I'm falling into there too. I feel like it's a cesspool, but it's also a money cesspool. <laughs> there's there's money to be made in Games Workshop. I'm not gonna lie. 
Ooh, I love that. Do you guys see that beautiful? It's almost like a Payne's gray. I'm just using kind of a watercolor move on that by just thinning it. Like a watercolor look. Thalo, Thalo blue and Thalo green are amazing, yes. Yes. It's called One Shot Primer, but be aware they have horrible bottle caps. Oh. Okay. I did not know that. This the bottle caps on the Steinle Res are just these little they're not yeah, maybe these are horrible too. They're not the best. Um stuff does get blurped out quite a bit where and I'm not a I'm not a you guys know I'm not a um pristine painter. I'm a bit messy. There we go. So I've, I've been considering some changes to my stream, guys. I wanted to talk to you about it first. Um, ooh, I don't know if I want that there. That's okay. I'm thinking about maybe not streaming on Wednesday nights um, and adjusting things a little bit. I feel like I'm not getting stuff done in my studio. And... I might, I'm either going to drop down to two days or shift things around so everything is on the same time. This is going to be easier for me. You're moving more and more towards that Spanish style. I like the Spanish style. Um, it's really high, like, contrast. And let's get some more pigment on the page here. There we go. Really high contrast, and it's also um, very illustrational. Messy is good. Messy is good. I agree. Okay. A little bit. I'm mixing a little bit more of my my dioxazine purple, as Bug King calls it. Which is funny because you dioxazine di, true dioxazine purple is like almost impossible to mix. <laughs> Oh my God, I do not like reading the stand, reading standards. Okay, there, that's a little bit, oof, okay. Make some more, and now my purple went away. The blue just killed my purple. Try it again. I haven't fixed the ranks from Amberton. I need to fix those still. There we go, ooh, there we go. I wanted, I should have mixed that ultramarine first. That's better. A little bit more. There we go. Beautiful. What up, Elric? Hello. Super smooth approach is very nice, but it looks plasticky. Yeah. I am. Um, that's the American style is a very super smooth, um, plasticky kind of cartoon, cartoon style. And I, I lean more toward European painterly and you know not quite as much as the Spanish but much um ooh, I like that right I'm liking these deep saturated shadows in this okay I'm getting I'm kind of doing all my little under under what do you call it not underlining. Dark lining. Dark lining. That's what I'm calling it. Okay. Get in front. Anywhere there's a deep crevice, I'm going to throw a dark shadow in. You find that realism lies in the imperfection of things. Yes. I have some texture in there showing some roughness. Model. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. That's that's why I like realism because I am not I'm not a smooth blender. And I like a little extra smoothness. Not smoothness. Um chaos. <laughs> A little extra, uh, extra 
shadows, any kind of thing to break it up. That doesn't just look like a coloring book. It doesn't, my style in the US doesn't tend to do well in competitions. Um, they will pick out, like, they'll say that you have a blending issue right here. And I'm like, right, but that's all over the model. And it's a style choice. They don't, they don't quite get that. Need pro to make your gesture rank. That's true. Hold on. I, chat is going fast. Holy cow. Which two days are... So Friday, I'm going to keep Monday. I like my Monday stream a lot, 2.30 to... Um, but I'm thinking about adjusting my Wednesday and my Friday. And if I adjust Wednesday, it's going to be so that I can be earlier. And if I adjust, I might just make all three streams at the same time. I'm also... I know that a lot of people prefer a three-hour stream, but... I don't know. I'm debating on whether or not that's necessary too. I don't know. We'll see. Really, having three different time zones didn't really do anything for me. For for my viewership. It it helps like some of the Americans and some of the Australians see me. But I don't know if it's there's enough of them. Alright, I love that. Look at that beautiful blue. Hey, Lamunas, how are you? Sorry, I, I went on early. Just show she redid her. I didn't redo my ranks bug. I I uploaded the new bot and it killed my ranks. It like all them, they all went away. I did re, sorry, I did redo them recently. So there's new ranks, but I need to give everybody some kind of points back so that they can have them. Yeah, exactly. Amberton's telling it. Miniatures Den says yes and no, because if you look at Crystal Brush, it was one pretty much always you, you painters using rest style. I know, but there's a little bit of like name brand bias with that because it's about your following, right? A little bit. I mean, Benjamin Cantor used a European style and he had this crazy, amazing paint job. And he, you know, he got beat by the Europeans because of his, he doesn't have a huge following. You know, that's the other thing about Crystal Brush is the, uh... Yay. Yay, Last Samurai. Thank you for the follow. Welcome. You see my point, though? Every region has its own judges. Yes, 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 yes. Competitions feel more and more like paint what the judges want. Yes. Thank you. That validates me so much. You have no idea. <laughs> I've been really frustrated with competitions lately. Um, it, I think you're exactly right. I've seen um, pieces that were not as good painted lose to pieces that were better painted, but the subject matter was more to the judge's taste. Just even just the subject matter, right? And if it's, if it's a painting competition, what are you doing? You know, if you're a judge. Okay. I'm being a little sloppy. I need to slow down. No. Oh. I'm going to spread it out so it looks like I did it on purpose. Bugging says, yeah, I'm, I'm reading hazard alignment gilding. Oh, guiding principle, so riveting. <laughs> Amberton says, I've been missing most of the Wednesday streams as I need more sleep. Yes, I understand that. So you'd actually like it if I switch my Wednesdays. Minshuden says, I went to GW and saw many nice models in real life and then saw mediocre paint jobs win over those paint jobs. Yeah. Because the winners had more GW, GW feel. Yeah. Oh, 
frustrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is such a bias, isn't there? Let me go back over this a little bit. All right, we're looking good now. We've got some of our shadows in. I think I can do some of the highlights now. I feel like I need to dip and get in here and do this kind of like hollow man look thing over here. Ooh, I like that. Cool. I like purple as, as shadows a lot. Little bitty things here. There we go. Nice dark. Paint's great. This is kind of like a purpley. Not paint's great, but if you added more, maybe more brown to it, it could turn paint. Paint's great. Aw, create your bots. Thank you so much. That's a lot of bits. I really, really appreciate it. Number one on the on the stream chat. Um, oh, they've got a new thing now. Give to sub now to be number one. Okay, sweet. You can be like on the leaderboard for gifting and for subbing or for bot for bids. Thank you, Krieger Bot. The industry sense says funniest thing though ever, ever though, was told to me by someone who's been competing for almost 15 years now. What'd they say? He told me that what made him quit competing was when a judge brought bought a model for five grand and then did all he could to make said model win a competition. Even though it wasn't as good as some other models, he basically said, judges are starting to dabble into purchasing of models, making them win and then reselling them. Yes. Yes, I've, I've heard that. Bought a model for five grand. Yep. <laughs> You know, and then there's other companies, too, that are doing the same thing, Miniatures Den. I'm not going to name any Italian names. But uh, <laughs> there's, there's a company that, um, a couple of them, actually. Well, one might be not Italian. One might be a different. But <laughs> um, they what they do is they, they'll have a, mo a model sculpted and then have it painted and brought to like CB and then they'll release it after the fact which is a very viable marketing strategy absolutely as a business person that's a good idea um you know but who knows I mean it makes it difficult for the regular person <laughs> Oh, thank you for the sub. Mad love. We got oh, we got to write down our subscribers, don't we? We have a we treat this like a classroom and I, you get your name on the board when you sub in this place. Let's see here. We got I want to make sure I've gotten everybody cuz we had Okay, yeah. You're the first subscriber of the day. Sub. If I can spell right today, subscribers. There we go. Lots of hearts. There you go. Mad love. Oop, we got it. Put the camera. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it is good chat. I love talking about art. I love it. Um I uh <laughs> I I don't like competitions for the purpose of competing. Cause I don't really feel the need as an artist to say I'm better than anybody. I don't, I don't, I don't need that. I don't need praise. I, I need validation that, that I worked hard on something, you know, that's what I like. I like it when somebody says, I can see that you, you really did a good job and, and I really like this mini. It's, it's just not my favorite. And that I'd rather have that than somebody go and they pick out, Oh, you got a blending issue, blah, blah. That's not encouraging to me, you know? I'm, yeah. <laughs> and a lot of judges do that. It's like, I don't know what to say about it. 
difficult to find people who are into the competition business world to chat about these kinds of things. No, I agree. Yep, and, and there's a lot of people get really defensive about it too, and they, they shut down or they defend it. No, I believe that there's only one kind of way to do miniatures and there's good art and there's bad art and that's the only way I'm not, no, I'm not that kind of person. There's all kinds of different ways. Bug King says, I like competing because it pushes me to improve and gives me a deadline to work with. Yes, I like, I like competing because I get to show my work off. If I could just do a, like a salon or a curated show where we just like pick a theme and everybody paints from the theme and you can, you can even show different levels and, but we, we, we look for the cre best creative, um, approach and, you know, yes, there's going to be a certain level of technicality that's going to be involved, but it's, it's not as much of a technical idea that I have. That's my idea. <laughs> Especially when those people judging are not as good. At yes, yes. Oh, I feel so validated right now. This is like, there are so many people judging out there that don't have any background in art or don't have that many years in painting and should not be judging. <laughs> and and I I I've decided to back away from judging. I've been asked by I've decided to back away from judging because um I don't I don't like having to disappoint people either. Like I mean, I like open competitions. Like Europe has really um good ways of doing open competitions and some of the historical community does as well. Um, but what's nice about that is that everybody can kind of see where they at, where they're at. The trouble is in the U S they still don't know how to get away from podium style judging. And so you'll have people judging an open competition, but still thinking in the mindset of, we have to find out what's wrong with it before finding out what's good with it. And that doesn't work. You can't mix those. Bug King says, I like, oh wait, sorry. Bug King, and I think that is com competing to become better is absolutely valid and awesome. And it really does help in getting that feedback. But there's there's some, some judges that just aren't quite able to give feedback that the people need. I mean, I'm sure there's been a time, like even when I gave you that feedback about how I said um, the judges thought that the, it didn't look what did we say? It looked too real, the, your tree, and it turns out like you had painted everything. You know, it was just so real that we couldn't tell. <laughs> and I know that that, you know, that was not fun to hear, I bet, you know? But, um, and not the best, best commentary back to you. All right, I got that painted. We're gonna get some of this blue back here too. Ooh. I reach it. Ooh, always like difficult. Winning isn't necessary. To, yes, exactly. And I think if you approach com competitions with the idea of just finish and, and bring it, and um, that makes it a little bit easier to stomach when you don't get good feedback or you don't get any kind of award or recognition or val validation of any kind. Not sure that you necessarily have to be a great painter to be a good judge. It's more important to be able to see intent and quality. Yeah, no, I agree. And being able to give constructive feedback because there's there's feedback and then there's constructive feedback. I got told in the Gen Con competition on my gnomes, the gnomes that made last cut for crystal brush. So you know to get last cut and crystal brush, they're at least gold level, right? So I got, I think I got a silver because the way they did the points, it was funny, but they said the commentary was, looks great so far, needs more hours. 
Tell me how that's constructive. <laughs> Needs more hours. How many more hours? If I spend five hours on it, is that enough? If I spend a hundred hours on it, that may not make it better, you know? <laughs> Amber, it says, one of the problems at competitions is that the displays are usually badly lit. You normally try to take a good LED. Yeah, that's a good idea. I didn't think about that. That's a good idea. Ventures has said, yeah, painting to compete makes you better. It does. But when you need to train, but you need to train yourself to accept defeat. Yes. Yes. Going through art school helped me a little bit in that because in art school, every week you're, you'll have critiques and you'll sit up in front of the class and um, you will critique other people's work. So you learn how to give criticism and um, you also learn how to take it because everybody's critiquing your stuff as well. And you, you develop a little bit of a thick skin from that. So that, that, is, that is excellent and helpful. And so if you have a group on, like a small group of friends who are also all trying to improve, you can level each other up. By, by doing that kind of critique style um, feedback. But again, you have to train yourself even when you have a group of friends. Bug King says, in a way, I mean, it was validation of your ability to paint natural things. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Zab says, be gracious in defeat and humble in victory. Yes. Hey, Rumble, how you doing? Hello, hello. Bug King says, it does help that I had a lot of input and gave a lot of help to several winning pieces. That's, I noticed that. They were very, very grateful and gracious. All the hours, billable hours, yes. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. My, my, my feedback was paint more. It was like paint. Such a weird feedback. I am going to try to use my transparent yellow. Now, if you look at this yellow, it's a very cold yellow. This is Chimera is a beautiful warm yellow. It even says warm yellow on the side. Look at the difference. One's more orangey. A little bit. It doesn't show up on camera, but we're going to mix these two just a smidge because I need to make this yellow. We'll see. We'll see. I'm going to put, is it even open? Yet again, another paint I haven't opened yet. It is the laziest criticism, and it was by some, I'm pretty sure it was by somebody who has been judging competitions for years, which was kind of weird. I didn't expect that, but I do know that they are a very hard judge. It's just like I would have expected better feedback from them. All right, this is the transparent yellow. The transparents are awesome because they're transparent. Let's see, and I think, do I have my transparent orange here? Yes, I do. We can use this to make a warmer yellow also. Ooh, that's really orange. Gee, that may not work. We'll see. We'll see. We can also, got a little transparent red. We can mix our own orange. Just a smidge. Red is a very strong color. Bug King says, I judged a painting competition and issued reasoning behind each of the scores I gave when writing. That's good. Took a lot more time, but you think I think so. I think people probably appreciated it. All right. So, first of all, we're going to think about these lanterns. Think about fire like liquid, right? When the lanterns are turned, where's all the liquid going to go? It's going to go to the bottom right here. And fire is like the opposite. Like, you'd think that the brightest part would be... It's, it's going to be the lightest part. So I'm going to leave this little bit corner more white, more yellow. And we're going to start up here and paint kind of and leave some of that white down there. The top I can have nice and bright. Do the transparents leach through the palette paper? I, I don't know. Not yet. <laughs> I'll just say not yet. <laughs> Maybe they will. All right. 
Good, good, good. All right, that is a little bit clumpy. I put a little bit too much. And then so same thing on this one. We're gonna leave the bottom of the bottom of the lantern a little bit more white. They're all tipped. I'm painting right over all of the little what you call it's the little um, metal because we're going to paint that later. Okay, and notice when I go over the brown with my transparent yellow, it turns gross. I don't, I don't want that. I'm going to try. I'm going to see what happens when I mix. What happens when I mix my brown stein rose? It turns absolute poop colored. We need to add just a little bit of um, ivory or something to it to lighten it up. I'm going to add this olive flesh. It's already got a little bit of green in it. And that should turn it into a nice little ochre, I'm hoping. I don't, so I didn't add white white because that would probably be too heavy. Okay, so we got something there. Here, add more. Ooh, there's a taupe. And now I need a little orange. It's not working. There, there we go. Yay, ochre. It's getting there. It's, it's ogre-esque. Fire brighter to the source, redder, blacker to the tips. Yes, redder, white, wait. Fire brighter to source, redder, blacker to tips. Okay, good, yes. And so I'm gonna go back over here, my little area where I need some highlights from cloth. I'm, I'm just sketching right now because I want to see what color, if that looks like the right color. And then I can go back with my little bits of brown and kind of glaze. I don't know, this Dino Res may not glaze well, but I'm treating it just like paint. Because it is paint, right? You can paint with, you can paint with primer. In fact, that's why I like these colored primers. They're just, that's what James Wapple does. He paints with primer. And you know, it's... Since it's a gaming model and you're going to be touching it, if you paint with a primer, it's going to, it's not going to chip as much, which is nice. See all that down there, that's going to be nice and light because of that lantern lighting it up. Now I can get in here and blend. Blend, blend, blend. Feather, feather, feather. I need more brown. <laughs> All right. That ochre is pretty powerful. I'm having to blend back over it. That's nice. I really like that. And because it's of yellow brown, it when we get to the lighter parts of it, the blue in the shadows, the bl blue purple in the shadows looks really pretty. See that? Ah, oh, I love it. And I'm using it pretty thinly because notice that the, the white primer back there is a lighter back. So we don't need to go. We're gonna, I'm going to add just a smidge amount of yellow back here right next to the lantern. We're giving it our kind of OSL glow look, blending it back onto the cloth. Sometimes with OSL, when it comes to it, I will do the rule of cool. Does it look good? Then okay. Sometimes cool is a little bit more nice than accurate. All right, a little smidge again of yellow up in there. Now, if you have a really dark brown cloak, actually probably not going to be lit up white that much still going to have a local color of 
brownish or or this ochre, right? That's it might be the lightest it gets. That looks even better now, I feel. Maybe. I get that more brown. We're getting farther away from our lights. Pounces juggle. Oh, Ty Love, how are you? Good to see you. Don't forget, we are going to be doing our paint along um, tomorrow. We're going to, um, oh, I like, see how this is starting to look glowing a little bit? Paint along is um, going to be at the same time, 2.30 to 4.30 GMT minus 6. And don't forget that, um, I guess U.S. is going to go through their time change on November 3rd. I believe that's what time I was told. All right, so that's looking better. Put some up here. So that means the free, the next, the next one will be GMT minus six, maybe, I think. We'll have to see. All right, a little bit of brown in this crevice. Not working. Try a little bit of this. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. When is it? It's going to be, so we're, we're going to do a build stream. That's our first stream. Subscriber only. So make sure that you're subbed if you're doing the paint along. Um, and it will be tomorrow from 2.30 to 4.30. All right. That shadow probably shouldn't be there with that lantern right there. Okay. That's good enough. I'm going to hold this away and see how that looks from a distance. I like to hold it close and then far away and see how things look. A little bit. The Steinol is blending nice. Really nice. All right, I need to do this brown up here too. Better. Oh yeah, much better. All right. It looks looks much better. I'm loving this little bit of kind of bluish greenish transition in there. I think that little color looks nice. All righty. Gonna give a little bit of highlights on this part. That will make everything else look more glowing as well. Kind of sketchy at this point still. Okay, you haven't done anything to them. You don't need to have them cleaned or anything. We're gonna do all that on stream. Um. I will put up a link to the Carl Ruddick PDF that I used when we did the Carl Ruddick bus so you can have at least the tools that you need to build. I know that we might need those. So we're, we're getting there. Now I need to feather blend in. I'm kind of wet blending a little bit. Just so there's no crunchy, crunchy lines there. Okay, now. What else? Let's do more lanterns, because I think I need to actually put some actual, let's do, instead of white, we're going to use this bright ivory. 
we're gonna we're gonna avoid using white and black on this unless we get down to the wire and we need to. Okay. Put that in there in the corner. Yes, yes, yes. That made a big difference. It looks definitely brighter than the primer is. Primer, I think, is a little bit transparent. Okay, let's add a little yellow and see what happens. Oh. Oh, now that's a glow, guys. Look at that glow. Transparent with the ivory. Opt. Liking that a lot. Oh, very pretty. A little bit more ivory down here. Again, I'm kind of wet blending a little bit. I'm hoping this is not going to dry too. There we go. That's lovely. Now let's just pick. Pick out a little. I'm just picking out with a little bit of this ivory. Just a little edge highlight and see what happens. Is it Essex? Thank you so much for the, look at that's glowing on screen. Cool. It took us four months to get our department manager to do a walkthrough to prove putting privacy blinds in our break room. What? That's a long time. At least you've got one now, right? So oh, I'm really liking that little bit of highlight. I'm gonna put that on the edges of things that might have a little bit brighter. I'm fighting it a little bit though. So that. Anything over here is going to be nice and bright, right? And the OSL. I really like that. I really like that really crisp. Right, right there. I'm going to make it even lighter the closer we are to lanterns. It looks like cloth, in my opinion. Okay. Okay, that looks nice. A little bit more of this taupey color. I think taupe is a better, better than ochre. I think it's more taupe. Again with the edges. I'm, I'm noticing, so now that I'm like looking closely, I can see it's okay because this is a very, I just want to smooth things out a little bit more. See there. Okay. 
Got a little bit in the zone. Hold on, I got to see some more. More area. In with the OSL. Go full on. Right by that. I like that. So the cool thing about having a glasses prescription is I can kind of pull back a little bit and kind of, I can get really nice contrasts and colors. Um, but again, again, maybe not so great with the blending um, until I'm looking at it real close. Ooh, see like that. All right, let me look at chat. We have approval. Who knows how long it will be before they come up on their end to put them up. That's true. Zealous, hello. Hey, look, I found someone else painting the living dead. Yes, this is this is the watcher. I don't know if it ever was living though. I don't know enough about the watcher lore. So I want to ask your opinion. Pats, what color shall we make these? I don't know if they're vines or if they're like little, like they could be like little electrical things. They look cool sometimes when they're blue. I've seen them blue. Um, I've also seen them, we can do them more white and yellow. But I'd like your, your opinion on what color you think we should work those to be. Did I ever find? Yes, I did. I did find my missing Phoenix hand. In fact, so now Phoenix is all together and complete. And I found it, I found it like right over here by my paints. I was like very, very happy. This is looking good. Now imagine this is gonna be looking similar. Electrical would be so cool, like a bluey, like kind of, yes. Fade to light gray or ivory. So, yeah, I think that's a good idea. What about, oh, we do have this, hold on. So one of the things when you're mixing colors with stuff, do mix that with this ivory, ooh is when you use the same colors over and over again on the palette, they tend to be more harmonious that way. We have it, we already have it in the shadows. I really like that color, that's pretty. Wispy fade to light gray or ivory. I think an ethereal feel, yeah, I think so. Maybe just even a little bit of this gray on some of the you can sh you can highlight with this because it's got white in it tiny bits oh yeah 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 that that's very cool looking all right let's do more mm. That needs more white in it. Hmm. I feel like it needs like more of a electric feel to it. Let's do sky blue. Maybe this will work. It's not as desaturated. Come on, come out. not gonna come out uh, hold on there's like a chunk chunk of paint oh there we go good paint okay Okay, I was gonna mix a little bit of that in there. Right. 
like that. Okay, let's just go straight blue now. I like that. And then we'll use some of this to get lighter. And I can highlight whatever these little, I don't know. I think maybe this is some kind of like a canthus. I don't know what it is, but make it work. We think, and we need more, right. All right, that's something, I don't know yet. I feel like there's something missing. Blues are hard. I feel like. Hmm. All right, we'll just keep going. Maybe I desaturated too much mixing it with that. Let's see what happens. I like the little blue, little blue highlights on the brown. I think it makes it look like you, like you said, a little bit more electric. It just adds something. Yeah. Like another bounce, another bounce light, another, another kind of interest that light that blue light I like that yellow and blue OSL did not expect to come and do this but it works it now we got to be careful about adding any other colors into those lanterns because I I want to go warmer with them but I don't Ooh, yep all right that looks really good I think I'm gonna use this this is the transparent paints and that yellow yes just that warmy orange can look amazing with that blue. Blue and blue and yellow are opposites on the color wheel, as you know. Why it's look Yay! Yay! Bazoo wait. Yazoo. Wait, I gotta pronounce that again. Hold on, let me look. Ya, boo, booze, orphis, orphris, ya vusavris. Oh my goodness, that's a tongue twister. Ya vu, zorfris. Did it. Ya, is that right? Did I get it right? Ya zu, or, orphris, ya zu, ya vu, zorfris. Yavuzorfus. <laughs> That's a tricky one. I try to get many. I, it's like a challenge for me to try to get people's names right. Now let's put a little bit of this warm color in there. Look at that. Warming it up. Ow, that's beautiful. I love, I love color. Yeah, and the transparents are so good because you can do this kind of like thin layers and get really amazing looks with them right away. Okay. Now, I think I'm gonna try just this. See what happens when I go with the red orange. That might be too much. I think that's too much. Let's kill it. 
with this darker color. Mm, okay, taking glasses off, I'm going to use this dark purpley color to color. Ooh, that's not dark enough. I'm going to steal my... Is that it? Nightshade purple. You guys know nightshade purple. I love nightshade purple. Completely clogged. <laughs> Thanks for taking <dancing. laughs> You stop it, Lunas. <laughs> He's teasing me because I don't pronounce his name right, and I try. It's uh, it's Lamunis, right? Never gonna let me live it down. I'm looking for them all. I have a little bit. Let's not find it. Here's a piece of wire I can use. Oh, wait, even better. I've got. Oh, I thought I had it. Nope. I'll just use a piece of wire. Hi, Modal. How are you? Don't bend on me. Here we go. Okay, let's see if this works. Ooh, and I'm curling up a little bit. That means I need more water. Masaguita. I learned some Spanish from some preschool kids. And, oh, that was my airbrush. That's not good. Hold on a second. You can do the dropped. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I got to see what if I bent my airbrush needle. I did not. Holy. Oh, no, I did bend it just a little bit. Might still... It's not bent at the tip, just the, I think I can fix it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so and creaky, you don't like this cold. I know, it's not, not good. We've been having, we got, we got some snow here in Illinois, not too, not too fun. And I think having a dry, having a dry, um, Studio makes makes it harder for me to keep my palette wet. We do have a humidifier, which I do think it's helping, but it's not the best. Wrecked. Yeah, it's. I think it's going to be okay. I'm looking at it, and it looks. It still looks pretty straight. I think it'll be okay. Thank goodness. All right, time for a beverage. I have. Hint, it is blackberry flavored hint, water infused with blackberry essence and other natural flavors, zero calories. It's really good. It really makes me drink water. It says Whole30 approved, zero carbs, zero fat, zero sugar. Made in San Francisco. Did it stick? Um, some of it did. Some of the some of the snow did stick. I think. I haven't been outside today. Ray Jack uh, R J R J C. Is that how I say it? R J C. I think that's how I'm gonna say it. it says um, I have half finished watcher on my shelf. I thought I enjoyed painting it, but I tried. Too many techniques at once, and I wasn't too happy. I understand. <laughs> I understand. I'm kind of going through that at the minute. But I'm really loving the blues and yellows in here. So, and we need to get in here with our beautiful dark color. Some of this in the deep shadows as well. Nightshade purple, the purple of all blacks. So you can get it from Reaper. I love it. It's the best color ever. I'm going to paint all of the little metal rings, black, or not black, sorry, nightshade purple. I get in the habit of calling it black, but it's not black, and that's what why it looks so good on things, is because it's not black, and it reads as black, though. Okay, 
tamping. That in, and then on the bottoms of these things. Add a little water. Hmm. Yesterday, I had a comment on my Facebook page that was kind of amusing. Um, I couldn't tell. Some Everybody else was telling me it's a troll comment, but I just, I don't think so. I think the guy was serious. He said that um, I have a lot of raw talent and that um, I, uh, what else did he say? He said that uh, I need to, I need to get some um, mediums. So that because uh, my um, my work looks like watercolor, and I need to basically he was trying to tell me I need to blend better, <laughs> and I was like, I didn't I just I just thanked him for his comment, but it was amusing because you know he must not know that I was a watercolorist and I actually try to have a watercolor style, so that was funny. It's only badger. Yes, strip it. Start it over again. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. All right. So now I think I've got the. I think I've got this lantern at least where I want it. So I'm going to start. But, oh, see. Mm. I already got over the over the lines. I'm just going to use really thick paint because apparently it wants to run on me. I'm just going to try to brush over. There's like these little S's. I have to get a smaller brush. I'm trying to use the side of my brush to hit these little marks. There we go. That's pretty. There's bottom. I have to have my glasses off and I have to be able to go slow and concentrate on those little lanterns. That doesn't look too bad. And then a little bit on this. Ah. Okay. More S. Flip it upside down to get a better angle. Yeah, okay. Look at chat. Be a lot of my name. Hello from France. Bonjour. I know my French is terrible. My my uh my pronunciation. Bonjour. <laughs> RJC. There you go. Perfect. I, I said it right. Such a noob. Get some contrast paint. I know. I should get some contrast paint and some mediums. What happened to me using the nerd visor? The nerd visor. Where is it? I just, I don't know why I pronounced it nerd. Nerd. Uh, here it is. It's just a matter of me finding things on my what's covered desk. I said what's all right, let me try it. There, okay. Oh, that's much better. Thank you. That was much, you know, surprise, the visor helps. Oh my goodness. I still need a smaller brush though because the point on this one's not the best. Second. Hold your breath. <laughs> and use the side of the brush to try to hit the little better. There we go. 
All right, that works. Uh, yes. Little lantern now. Just a little bit of this brown taupe color, just a smidge right here, because this lantern is kind of casting OSO on this one. And when when light hits black, you get kind of a a brown color. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> The, wait, let me see. The Bogotan new, new bike, new bike. Is that how I say your name? The Bogotan new bike. Um, can you share what you finished working on today? It was my second attempt at airbrushing. It's a dragon mini. Yes. Send the link to uh, NG Laminus. Laminus. Yeah, you can't. I'm sorry. You got to send it to a. You got to send it to a mod. You can. You can have a. Oh, don't worry. I'm very, I'm gentle. Oh, Elric. What? Thank you so much for the tip. I'm gentle. Don't worry. I, I, I'm an, I'm also an art teacher, so I know how not to kill your artist spirit. <laughs> um, send the link to, um, NG Laminus, the, the name right above yours. He's one of my mods who can post it for you. We're doing good on this. We've got all this. I need to mix a little bit of this blue with this tan and see what happens. It's going to give me kind of a greeny. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. Ooh, I like that. That's what I needed. I needed that kind of greenish color. Hmm. only tear you apart I don't even then I am I like that brutal has anybody ever had such a rough critique from me I don't think so okay, I like that better all right and then I'm gonna try let's do one last thing with this just a little bit of this OSL on the top of this. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Yeah. Doesn't look too bad with just a little bit of that yellow. Hmm. I like that. Um, what color should I make these little... I don't know what color to make those little um, ribbons. I don't know what's holding them on. Some kind of like, maybe we'll make those also tan. I don't know, I think that'd be boring. Let's look at this. Let's look at Bogotan new bike. We're gonna look at your dragon. Oh, look at that. Look at all those models. Productive. I love the blue. I love the, sorry, I love the, um, the purple on the belly. I can't, see, let me see if I can. Actually, let's, 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 do you mind if we throw this up on screen? We can throw this up on screen, I think. Back here. Nope. That's fine. Okay, good. Let me see. Yeah, we can throw this up on screen. Desktop. Find the right thing. It might have killed my whip trip. Oh, I know where it is. Over here. There we go. It's right here. There. Boom. Can you see that? So that's... Take a look at this. Let's see if... Can I zoom in on this? I can't zoom, can I? It's not letting me zoom on it, but it looks so good from this distance. That's going to help me. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> All right, let me go back. Burp, burp, burp. Try this again. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you, Lemonis. Got it. 
I just do. All right, there. On this. Oh, is this a better? Oh, there we go. Okay, let's show this off. Take a look at that. So it looks like we started off with some lighter colors and then you kind of gradually, and I see you're using army painter. How are you liking those? And what is in this bottle right here? Cool, awesome. If I can show you the first one again. Yeah, see that? So it got much, much more blue toward the end. Man, the ramparts. What's that mean? <laughs> Hi, Marion. How are you? Holy cow, what just happened? Hello, people. Raid from Reaper Miniatures. What? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I am, I am, I am verklempt. What, <laughs> what the heck is happening? This is a really big raid. Mad love, everybody. How are you? I'm gonna have to thank a bunch of people for following here. We're painting a Kingdom Death Mini, the Watcher, but we're gonna give a huge shout out right now to Reaper Miniatures. For being amazing. Hold on. Fantastic. Reaper Miniatures, one of my sponsors that um, helped like save my Tuchus during Dragonfall Con because they made they were able to send me some models for my classes and the classes went off with a smash. Yay! Reaper. Let's do this. Hold on, I'm gonna. Do a little shout out real quick there. Boom. Yay! Hello, everyone. We got a zillion people following me. Holy cow. Hello. I paint miniatures. My name is Shoshi. If you've never heard of me, I'm on all the different social media up here. This little strip right here. All of them are Shoshi's minis, just like, just like right here. Oh my gosh, what? Sub, oh my goodness. Aries Gal 2000 just gifted the Ladande, Avil Warrior, Carbon 14, Gimmick 7652, and Mr. Ott's subscriptions to the channel, which we're doing. We're, do we're gonna do a giveaway today, by the way. We should probably set that up while you all are here. Holy cow, I have 400 viewers. I don't think I've ever had that many at one time. This is insane. All right, we're gonna do, we're gonna do a giveaway because this is crazy. And guess what? I have a Reaper Mini to give away. Look at this beautiful miniature that I painted at ReaperCon with my buddy. This is, I painted this with my buddy Josh um, Davis, who you can follow him. He's a um, mini painting. I think it's called mini painting. He's awesome. He's not so much on Twitch. He's more on Facebook. But we're going to give this away. This is The Grudge by Reaper Miniatures. And the class that we taught at Reaper Miniatures was, um, it was called Dueling Brushes. And me and Josh painted this guy together. And um, we each took a different approach. And so... It was really cool because we were able to um, paint, bo bo both paint him in such a way that, you know, he looked completely different, but both were really cool. Look at that face. Look at that makeup. Yes. All right. You just got to be following. Most of you have already been following. Yeah, that was a class. Jacob Jansen took the class. It was a good class. Am I coming back? Yes. ReaperCon is amazing. If you haven't been... All right, let's, let's set up the giveaway. This is a good time for it. Um, shipping's already paid by Jacob Jansen, the, the amazing. And also, actually, the other person who tipped me also helped with the shipping. So we can ship anywhere in the world. 
So it's actual real giveaway and not in any way or shape or form a raffle. Yeah, let me check. Um, let's see, let's set this up. Oh, that. I had to find. Yay! Goodness, there we go. There we go, giveaways. Hey, Maharoon, how are you, mad love? Um, I'm kind of, it's a little bit, this is for followers. Yeah, anybody who's following is able to get in on this giveaway. We're going to set this up right now. All you have to do, you'll see, you'll have to put exclamation point raffle or something like that. That's it. All right, we're going to set this up. Um, custom. I'm going to do follower giveaway. Yay, all these new people. It's awesome. All right, winner of the giveaway gets Painted Bust the Grudge by Reaper Miniatures, painted by Shoshi. Let's see, the winner of the giveaway gets Painted the Painted Grudge Bust from Reaper Miniatures. by Shoshi. You'll get an original Shoshi. I'll sign it and everything and I'll send it to you if you should win this. And then we're going to put grudge bust giveaway. And we're going to do this to everyone. Go and we're going to put, so I usually end my streams at about 5.30, so we'll, we'll end it at, so right now it's four, so we'll do an hour and 15, how's that? That'll be enough time. We'll do an hour, we'll do an hour 25, just a little bit longer. Oops, clicking too many, too many things I'm clicking. There we go, hour 25. Yay, thank you guys. I know you want to win this. All right. I'm also, I'm just going to give us subscribers one bonus ticket. Okay? We're going to do this to fo uh, followers, but um, subscribers are going to get a bonus ticket. And tickets are going to cost, let's see, we'll just make them one. One ticket. we go and I'm gonna start the giveaway not yet I haven't started yet wait till it says wait till the bot says Yay. a winner the winner of the giveaway gets a painted grudge bust from Reaper Miniatures by Shoshi Bauer raffle is started for viewers use exclamation point raffle to enter the raffle don't think yours will end up looking like that <laughs> it's okay again it's okay you can if you end up winning it you can try to copy it and everybody also, if if you are a subscriber, try doing another ticket. See if it lets you do two tickets. Because I, I make a game made a little bit easier for my subscribers. Because I love you, subscribers are make what what make me stay on Twitch. To be really honest. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, I have a million people to thank. I have a million people to thank. Oh my goodness! Holy cow! All you new people, welcome. So I wanna let you know, this is an unusual time for me to stream on Fridays, but I'm thinking about moving my time. But usually I will stream from 2.30 to 5.30 GMT minus five. Um, well, it'll be six after the time change on Mondays. And then I'm thinking about moving my Wednesday and my Friday stream to that same time. I think it'll be a lot easier for me to just stick. Okay. Tyler says, do, so would you enter, try, yeah, try to enter it, try to do another exclamation point raffle tie. If you have a subscription, try it again. It looks like it might have. Looks like it worked, because it's not telling you can't. Okay, good. Yay. Woo. This has been intense. First of all, I want to thank Aries Gal 2000 for gifting those subs. That's just awesome. I really appreciate that. So um, I want to let... 
Let's see. Mr. Odds, Gimmick, 7652. Carbone, Carbone 14. Lila Donde. Um, all of you got, you already have a subscription, LaDonde, or maybe it's the bots just now. Oh, Gecko Time. It's Gecko Time, too. <laughs> I want to let you guys know that you guys get an extra ticket because you're now subscribers. Thanks to, thanks to, um, how do I say your name again? Let's see. Aries Gal, 2000. All right. Somebody has, wants to see the geckos. You guys don't know this, but back here in this beautiful tank, where I have these pink grow lights on my plants. Holy cow, and we just made our our shipping goal for the whole month too. Oh my gosh, everything is happening. I'm like, whew. Anyway, I have two African fat tail geckos that are sleeping probably, but we're somebody somebody just uh Lamunus wants to see the geckos. So he spent his cat points. Thank you for that subscription. Oh my goodness. <sighs> <laughs> Dungeon Master Pale. You guys really want this this bust, huh? Thank you. The bot can't keep up with you. I'm not even seeing all of my subscribers show up on on the chat because the bot can't keep up. Let me see if I can. Oh. <laughs> all right. I'm gonna get the gecko out while we're while we're still. Seal Dancing Real is now subscribing. Thank you so much. You guys are so cool. Made my day, Reaper Miniatures, and everyone who came with them. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's get this gecko. We got two geckos, but I'm only gonna get out one, and I think Ginger Biscuit is probably gonna be the one. Come here, baby. So I have two geckos, one's named Peppercorn and she's brown. And this is Ginger Biscuit. You can see her, there she is. She's a little bit albino, so the lights do kind of hurt her eyes a little bit, just a little bit. She has a little stripe. She's African fat tail gecko, they, and they're called fat tail geckos because they store, here I'm gonna show you in the overhead. You're all in for a treat. Yeah, they are, they're all in for a treat. So here she is. She's got a little fat tail. Her skin is really soft. She's like a little baby. That's how she, she's not cold because she likes to sit under the heat. I've got a heat lamp, heat projector in there. Yes, and this this tail is nice and fat because she's getting ready for winter. They, they slow down a little bit in the winter. Aw, Jacob Jansen, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. Today is amazing. I really appreciate this. We love you, Kapaka. Aw, thank you. These Reaper raids tend to be a bit overwhelming. It, I felt like it. It was a little bit. So this cutie, she is really curious and really sweet. She puts up with like, she, she, she went to a grade school apparently before I got her her first home. There she is. She's done doing a blip. Sipima, thank you so much. I'm sorry if I'm missing anybody. Here we go. Look at the face. She's looking at the camera. Yay! So, yeah, she's the best. And they, they have eyelids, so they do close their eyes. And she's, um, they're kind of like, let me show you. Yay! Oh, she's going to fall. So they're kind of like cats a little bit in that, you know, when you do a slow blink at them, they'll blink back at you. I love it. And when she's hunting, she'll like lift up her tail and, and shake it. It's really cute. Oh no, it must have been so scary for her. I don't know, because she's so chill. She's just really, really chill. I don't think that she, now the other one gets stressed out a little bit more. And I don't take her out as much because of that. But this one doesn't seem to mind being held and actually seems to like it because she likes to she likes to come out. She'll come out and see me. There we go. We're all set now. We're ready to paint, guys. <laughs> Shut up. I love her. <laughs> I know. She's so cute. All right. If, you are, if you're just joining us, 
we're doing a raffle, exclamation point raffle. All you have to do is be a follower and you can get in on winning this bust from Reaper Miniatures who is so kind. And uh, I'm currently painting the watcher. Renfeld, or Renfield, thank you so much for the host. I appreciate that. This is the, the watcher. We're painting some um, off-source lighting on him to try to get him all prettified, socified. We actually have Reaper. This is, um, what is this? It is Nightshade Purple. See, I'm all for, I'm all for cleanse. Nightshade Purple for my black instead of black. So I like how dark it is. There we go. What happened to the sub point goal? Um, I took it down because we never made it, and because of the way um, the way Reaper or not sorry the way Witch works, it uh, it just never. I don't know. It's it's too ephemeral. It's just a weird setup how that works for Clemp. We don't have a for Clemp emo. <laughs> we need one of those, don't we? You guys love all my Yiddish. That's another thing. You can learn a lot of Yiddish from my channel. We, we, we have schmutz. We have, um, for Klemps, we have mensch. We try to teach you. We have tuchus. I always also say tuchus. Thank you so much for all your followers. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Colgan Grimm is following. Let me see if I can do a quick. Gaggles, Meta Jock, Metal Jock. Oh no, Meta Jock. Hoove, Dimbus, Beach Nuts, Zamfer, uh, So the Lutz. I think that's how I say it. My goodness, there's just so many. I don't know if I can go through them all. I'll probably be thanking everybody till the end. Think you're Mel Bur you think my you think I'm a Mel Brooks fan? I think I'm just part of Mel Brooks's tribe. <laughs> we do need a tuchus. We need an exclamation point tuchus. Injured. Yeah, the the gecko is a very very cute and very sweet. Next time, next time we only get out one gecko per stream, once per stream. So we have that kind of that aside so once per stream we'll get out a gecko but sometimes it'll be peppercorn and sometimes it'll be ginger biscuit there was I think it was last stream I actually got both of them out and that's a very very rare thing very very rare some of this is airbrush and some of it is hand painted um, we, what we did was we primed with Steinal Res brown prime. Well, we first we used black, then we used the Steinal Res uh, ebony flesh paint. Uh, sorry, primer. Then we did a little white. But that is all airbrush. But now I'm showing how to use that to create good um, off-source lighting, which is what we're doing with these lanterns. And right now, just very carefully trying to paint the little bars. That consists of the top of this lantern. Yeah, there we go. So I, I have to take my glasses off because I'm extremely myopic. And so we have a little we have a little command for that. So oh my goodness, I can hear so many people starting to follow. Thank you so much. Every one of you. There we go. I'm going to use the side of my brush to just come down and get that little bit of S. Oh, see, now that can go wrong just like there. I'm going to have to fix that. Okay. Everything can be fixed. Now I'm going to try this again. Try to do this. There we go. All right. Rinse the brush. By the way, for this raffle, since there's so many of you guys that I don't know 
you do need to be present to win. But I'm, there's no way I'm going to be able to track everybody down. But I want you to try to see if you can be present to win the raffle. Yeah, the bot, the bot died. I don't know what happened, but it's just... Bot's doing, it's not doing anything in chat. I think that it's just doing stuff on stream. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't want to listen. Are you able to do exclamation point raffle? Okay, Candy did. Just did it good. All right, I'm looking. I think I need a smaller brush for this last part. I'm going to use this one, which is nice because it's a little bit of a synthetic, so it's a little bit more stiff and hopefully won't get bendy on me. Yay! We'll get these, see how the, that works better. If I get too much, too much black on there, I can come back with white and cover it up if I need to. All right, that's, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's catch up on chat. The raffle announcements are going by. No idea if it's being accepting. Okay, I'm seeing them. So that's, I think it is. The bot isn't therapy. <laughs> oh, I have to get out. We got another gecko? Okay, well, we'll get out peppercorn this time. Nobody's ever done this. I didn't know we could, I didn't know we could have two geckos at once. All right, we're going to get another gecko. You guys, you guys deserve it. There's been enough enough love for me that you deserve it. Yay! Let's see if Peppercorn's in a good mood. She's a little bit more feisty than the other one. Doesn't like to come out nearly as much. Come here, baby. Yay! A little bit more feisty. All right. This is Peppercorn. She is brown. She has a little bit of stuck shed on her, so I need to, and she sees she's not wanting me to touch her. <laughs> I think I need to give her a little bit of a, a sponge bath. I think she just recently shed because she's got little pieces all over her, and I don't feel like she did the last time we brought her out. I think she was, see how she's not wanting me to touch her as much? Hard to see. There's a girl, there we go. Hi. Kind of looking at the screen. She's so cute. She's got a chunk tail. She's super chunky. Look at how big her tail is. This, and she was, she did have like little pooches in her armpits, which means she had a lot of extra. But she's looking down. She's like, I want to get down. Here, let me do this. Remove the palette. Put her in the little tray, and then she can walk around a little bit. There's a girl with the peppercorn. <laughs> These aren't leopard geckos. These are a sort of a cousin. They're from West Africa. Um, I believe leopard geckos are from like Iran or Iraq. And so these guys are more um, suited for humid climate in like West Africa. They're African fat tail geckos. They are related to, I think they're distant cousins of, of leopard, leopard geckos. Look at she wants down. All right, all right. Look at her little feet. Such a cutie. The first time I held one of these, I was like, oh my God, I love them. Look at how cute. See all these little pieces of duck shed. I need to Take a, um, a Q-tip and a little coconut oil, and I think I can get all that off. All right, I'm going to put her back. She, yeah, she does have tiny toes. Got little bitty toes. Not, so the difference between Africa, the, see, look at how small her feet are compared to a leopard gecko. Leopard geckos have so long toes. They have such long toes. All right, I'm going to put you back. It's okay. Little munchkin. There we go. Oh, much happier. And I'm going to turn my grow light off. 
Here we go. <laughs> Try to keep my lights in tune with the with the sun. And I think the sun is starting to go down a little bit already. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> you know nothing about geckos other than that you had two leopard gro geckos growing up named Starsky and Hutch. I love it. And you found out Hutch was a girl when she started laying eggs. Both of these are girls. Um, yeah, they say you, you shouldn't. Yeah. I'm surprised that you were able to um, home the two leopard geckos together without too much fighting. Ge leopard geckos are a little bit more um, aggressive than, than African fat tail. Just a little bit. A little bit. Oh, I don't know about that. That that didn't work, did it? Let's put more blue back over that. All right, that's better. That little aqua is not so bad, though. Yeah, I can live with that. Paint the wadger. I'm gonna add more blue. Here we go. Dimedi says that isn't shed. It's mold lines. <laughs> No, I can't cut them. So funny. A little bit more of that. I like that teal. That's pretty. It still goes with the orangey lanterns a little bit. I'm, we're trying to figure out what color to make these little eyes. And I'm kind of thinking we should make them... Maybe we should make them black or blue. Let's do. Let's try blue. See what happens. Oh. Mm, no. Let's try. Let's try nightshade black. There we go. Nightshade purple. That's better. Make it black. I can live with that. Do you have any recommendations or sources for learning how to layer and blend? I've only ever used dry brushing and layering and it makes you nervous. Okay, so one of the things I tell everybody is get some get some Reaper Bones or some WizKids models and just practice and practice and practice because what it'll do is um, you'll lose that fear. You won't be getting, you won't get nervous. And um, the other thing is not every single blending method is going to work for you. I paint to my temperament. And some people glaze, and you can see I'm not super high blended like a lot of people. I'm gonna, but I have some I have some videos on on YouTube that you can look at, and um, there are lots of there definitely are lots of resources on YouTube in general. I hope I'm sorry if that's a little bit vague, but. But that's what I do. I, I go to I go on YouTube and I look up blending tutorials. But I also have I have lots of videos on YouTube that you can look through that I'm always showing how I'm doing something. One of the things like with this blend right here, I'm kind of blending that blue into that yellow. But then I'm using the blue at the same time, right? So that's that's wet blending. You might try that because that's wet blending is nice. You know nothing other than geckos. Yeah, she said that. Interesting. I feel bad for them looking back. They had to deal with five kids under ten. Woo! As a caretaker for four years, leopard geckos are pretty resilient. Yeah, take my class. I actually have, I don't have a class about blending, but I have a class about painting in general and I show how to blend in every one of those classes that I do. Yuriko, thank you so much for the, for the subscription. Welcome. Mad love. <laughs> Haven't been able to make it to Reapercon yet, hopefully next year. It's, it's so worth it and it's so much fun. And you learn so much. Not bad. I think we're going to get in here with this greenish blue and then I can layer the blue over it. See, while it's still wet, I can just blend it 
on site, right? That's wet blending. Dry brushing and, and layering are perfectly valid. There's just, there's so many different ways to do things. Oh, the winner. Oh, it's Streamlabs is still saying exclamation point lap. Let me see what, how much time. Yeah, we've got a little bit more time still for the bot where we pick a winner. At least we know the bot's still alive, right? All right, that's looking really, really cool. Got a little bit more of this green in here. I'm using mostly Pro Acryl paints from Creature Caster. We paint a, a lot of everything on this on this channel, but we specifically paint, we paint a lot of Kingdom Death also. I really like the models a lot. Jay Crod, thank you for the subscription. You guys are so good. All right, a little bit of green. Oh, let's see, now that's too pigmented. I want that not to be so green. I want it to be more of a teal. There we go. We're not quite sure why vines are coming out of him, but some of the monsters on Kingdom Death don't make a, don't make a lot of sense. And just an FYI, Kingdom Death is a adult horror um, horror board game, kind of like Dark Souls. Um, but it's definitely mature themed, but not for everyone. But the monsters that I have are really tame. I have the Phoenix right here. Here's an, I'll show you a couple other models from them. Look at this. This is crazy. This is the Phoenix. And I haven't painted it yet except to do the brown primer on the top here and a little bit of airbrush. That is the Phoenix. And it's just, like I said, it's a horror game. So things are creepy. And then I've got two other monsters that you fight. Right here is the hand, and he's got a little glowing lantern at his, at his side. And he's called the hand, he's actually got a, a missing hand. So his hand is actually missing. Which Kingdom Death model do I like best? Gosh, that's a good question. Of the core set, I think I like that's a really good question. There are so many. Huh. Um, I think of the core set, I like probably the Gold Smoke Knight the best. And this is this is the Kingsman. And he's got a glowing halberd right there. See. We just I just Xenothal primed him, but you can see that I primed him in such a way that. At this point, all we're doing is laying in some colors and you really don't have to do as much. You know, you can do less, like some glazing and, and get a lot of painting done very quickly. Um, Mia Mina, is, is, how am I saying your name? Yeah, thank you. Is it Mimina, wait. Meminem, there we go, Meminem, right? Sadly, no. Giant spider thing is called Spiticules, and he is very cool as well. And I've painted him twice. Oh, twice? Yeah, I think twice. Yeah, twice. I've painted him twice, and he is really cool. He's a really cool model as well. Meminem, yeah, I got it. Do I have the lion? I do. In fact, I've got videos of painting the lion on YouTube as well. Um, I have a lot of speed painting, how to speed paint your models um, on YouTube because I know that Kingdom Death is, is a very time consuming game, but you want to get, you know, you want to play right away, right? Okay, we're get, I really like that teal. I think that goes really well with the browns and, and yellows from the from the zenithal. Not quite as glowing as I thought it would be, but let me see what happens when I do a little bit of this. Maybe we can make this 
top just a little bit better. We'll add a little bit of the transparent yellow to it. So that's much better. I'm just adding it to the highlight of the ridge of things just to see. It looks, looks a little bit sloppy. Let me see if I can blend that a little better. I'm going to take my glasses off. Give me a second. That's better. Much better. All right. Sometimes you have to just say it's good enough, right? I'm going to get the other little spots. Ah, servus. The gate is dear. Zeren Zer Serenity's brush, but I would say, I would guess you would say that Zerenity's, Zerenity's brush, <laughs> if I pronounced it. <laughs> mein Deutsch ist noch nicht sehr gut. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> My husband um, majored in German in college, but never taught me any German. <laughs> es geht mir gut. Oh, good. <laughs> es geht mir gut. Kein Problem. <laughs> um, so I had taught myself a little bit of German with the help of um, an 80-year-old um, German history professor from Berlin. His name is Lutz. And uh, the very first time I was lear learning German, it was always like, nine, nine, nine. So she pass off. <laughs> and then, um, then later, as the years progressed and I was getting better and better, he would say, so she do least gut. You know? <laughs> he would say, prima. But I really enjoy any chances I can get to practice. Oh, the problem is that both in Austria and in Germany, pretty much most everybody speaks English. So when you try to go practice, they switch you to English. And I can't really, I'm not to the point where I can think in both languages yet. <laughs> All right, that looks, I'm happy with that. I think, I think I'm going to. Take a break on that side, and we're going to go to this side. And we've got this, this shawl thing is brown. And I'm thinking I'm going to make it a different color. Well, I think maybe this taupe color that I've made. I mixed this taupe. Half your family is German. The generation before your mom all spoke German all the time in the U.S. until the war. Yeah, Bill Robertson, my, my family, the Bowers. That's a German name. Um, came here right after this, the American Civil War. And uh, I've, I've only recently been learning about my Bauer side. They're from um, Baden-Württemberg in southern Germany. And they, my, my ur ur -Groß Großvater. I can't do my R's right now. Um, he's my, my great-great-grandfather. Had a, had a vineyard in, uh, in Neckarzom, which is where they build the, where the Audi plant is. All right, I'm going to use a little bit of this Steinle Res primer in this mix. Oh, Goldsmoke, Goldsmoke Knight and Phoenix are your best painting from the set. You were less happy with Watcher. Watcher's not an easy model to paint. He's got a lot, a lot going on. And there's, it's, there's a tendency to kind of get carried away with things. I think that's true from everybody. My husband speaks Spanish fluently, and all you can say is table. <laughs> Mi español es muy mal, pero yo comprendo más y menos. <laughs> I know how to say, I know, because I was a teacher, I know how to say in Spanish, um, like, sit down, be quiet, listen, look. <laughs> like all the important words. Can I say table? Mesa? Mesa? I think. I don't know. I love languages. You guys know this. 
There we go. I love that color. That's a very pretty taupe color right there. I'm going to use more brown on the inside of this. Better? You bet I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mem Mem says that they can say Mesa really well. <laughs> All right, mixing right now um, a little bit of my ivory with this. This is the Steinle Res Brown. We're actually using it as a paint. And then a little bit of the transparent yellow. And you can see it kind of turns a funny color. So we're going to add a smidge of orange to it just a little bit. I mix a lot of colors sometimes. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> there you go, you're fluent. Boom. <laughs> All right, there we go. That looks good to me. All right. I'm just sketching at this moment to see kind of where colors and shadows and everything are going to go. And I can go back in. This is the, what I'm talking about, like the wet blending. I can, I can wet blend it on and change it at a whim if I need to add. See back here, I think I'm going to use more brown has some purple underneath it, so that'll kind of shine through, maybe. I'm going to use a little bit of that nightshade down there and wet blend that in. Wet blending is like mushing two colors together. And mushing is a technical term. There we go. And then I rinse. Now, see where, I'm, see where these two dark colors are? I'm going to put the light color in the middle. And then feather that into the dark color. Perfect. Perfect. To annoy my wife, I speak horrible French with a lower bit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no offense to my British friends, but the mo like, so I love accents and I love how people sound when they're speaking. English or even their own language in their accent but uh the one of the most some some accents like irritate me and the one accent that irritated me was a British accent speaking German it sounds really pretentious <laughs> but listen I heard a Spanish guy, a guy from Spain speaking German, and that was really sexy. Really sexy Spanish accent with the German speaking German. <laughs> that load lamp is fantastic. You mean this lamp? This one? You do the dishes because he lives there. You can't wet blend at home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I know what you mean, evil halfling. We had to get a humidifier last winter in my basement because my basement gets so dry. And now we got a new furnace that has a humidifier. But I might still have to. What sort of British? I don't know. Upper crust queens? I don't know. It was maybe a little posh. Maybe a little bit. A New Zealander speaking a foreign language. That'd be hot. Oh, that's right. You like New Zealand accents. <laughs> An upper class British English accent is pretentious to the max. This is true. <laughs> he went to the Ren Fair in Dallas about 15 years ago and had a Spanish speaker speak, speaking old English for the Ren Fair. That sounds amazing. That sounds really cool. Oh, I need to get more soap up here. Yeah. Yeah. The so the other thing. Um, who was it? It was. Uh, Evil halfling. 
Um, you it might also be the paints that you're using. Um, I don't know if you're accustomed to, um, if you've ever used these paints by Pro Acryl. They have a long open time, and especially if you're using them on a wet palette, makes, uh, makes wet blending like a dream. So if you have, try, try a satin paint like P3, or, um, or maybe uh, try wet blending with a little bit of, just a little bit of drying retarder on your palette. I also have one of these, you can find these in my Shoshi Recommends down on my profile. Um, it's a Pentel watercolor brush pen and I put 50-50 drying retarder and water in it. And the drying retarder I use is True, I think it's called True Facts by, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Now I have to get it out. Hold on. Sacks by True, True Flow Drying Retarder. You can get a huge bottle of this. This is also in my, um, down in the bottom of my profile, you can see I've got Shoshi Recommends. So yes, yeah, a little, look at, I've had, I've had this whole bottle and I still have hardly used any of it. A little does go a long way. And it does slow down drying time and allowing you to work three times longer. It will not alter colors. And I like it. It helps a lot. As a Norwegian, people around here are surprised when you speak English since you don't speak with a Norwegian. I know. It's always so weird when I talk to people from the Scandinavian co countries and I can't hear an accent. And then I'm like, I could have swore you were from America. <laughs> They're just really good at English. Mostly Reaper, some scale settings. So both of those are matte. So I think that you would probably benefit a lot from a little bit of drying retarder. Just a little bit. See what happens. Maybe it'll help you look wet blend just a little bit more. Right now, I'm just trying to lay in this taupe color on top. So that, you know, when I... I'm going to bring this up to a more light and light, lighter and lighter color. Yes, you spent too much of your youth watching English dub cartoons. Yes. That's a great way to learn, though, isn't it? I should find some more German and Spanish dubbed cartoons. I watched this great movie with, I uh, can't remember the name of the actor, but it was called Siebenswerge. It was called Seven Dwarfs, and it was a comedy. The guy's name was Ol Olag. I can't remember. I can't remember his name. It starts with an O. Otto. If any any Germans are in the channel and you know who I'm talking about, Otto. So I watched this movie. Sieben Siebensverge is so funny. It's basically a Snow White and Seven Dwarves um, parody, and it's it's hilarious. Harpy says, "Okay, then I'm somewhere between Scouser and Lancasterian. Lancasterian, ah, uh, the no plum in the mouth accent here. <laughs> Still get pretentious. I don't know. I love I love the Midlands accents. I do." I think um, I have a friend. His name is Moggy. He's from Manchester. And um, I've got another friend named Jamie, and he's from West Bromwich. And West Bromwich has a very distinct accent, right? And because I listen to Jamie, I can kind of do the accent. I can only do like one sentence. I'm, I've said this before, so those of you guys who know that I've said this, so Jamie will say something to Moggy. He'll say, Moggy, are you grumpy, Moggy? You know, <laughs> are you grumpy? <laughs> Otto, yes, he's East Frisian. You went there when, when you were young. There were also cartoons of his elephants called Ozzy Fonten. <laughs> oh, that's cute. 
Bergdino, are you from are you from East Frisia? One of um one of my followers um got me the whole like I got a whole tea set and I know how to make the the tea te culture. Right? Tea culture. I uh I know how to make East Frisian East Frisian tea. And it's so yummy. We've had we've had talks about tea on this channel too. We always end up talking about food and 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 beverages. That's the one thing everybody has in common, right? We all love food in some sort. Hey Joanne, good morning. How are you? I haven't seen you in a little while. It was pretty early there, huh? We go. All right, we're getting the taupe on. North Frisia. Now you live in Berlin. I like Berlin a lot. Berlin reminded me a lot of Chicago, which is near my home. And um, except for Berlin has way more graffiti. On the walls, which is, is, I felt it was beautiful. I thought it was really cool because as an artist, I really like the street art in Berlin. Grandfather was an Otto, and your aunt told me that he was upset that didn't name you Otto. <laughs> Are you glad that you're Bill instead? There's not a whole lot of Ottos these days, are there? Not in not in the U.S. anyway. My my great grandfather, who was from Germany, his name was Franz Josef. And let me just tell you, if your name is Franz Josef, doing genealogy is so hard, because everybody's name was Franz Josef from that time period. <laughs> Franz Josef Bauer, which was like. Very common. It's like John Smith. In the U.S., John Smith is, like, really common. You got trolled by your aunt. Oh, you've been unwell? Oh, I'm sorry. Hendrake, I'm sorry. That's no fun. Make sure that you take it easy. Try not to go back to solid foods right away because sometimes that can set you off and make, make it start all over. All right, I'm just painting the taupe in here as well. I just realized this whole little dude back here is also taupe. There's lots of... Lots of little... Things to paint on this model. I need a little bit more, more yellow. There we go. A little bit orange. There we go. Yeah, I'm wet. I'm wet blending it in as much as I can, anyway. Not trying too hard at this moment. Oh, I want to real quick here. I feel like this will make this show up a little bit better. Yeah, I turned it on its side to make it a little easier for me. I like that. Forgot to write subscribers. I know I've got a bunch. I've got a whole bunch. Hold on. Let me let me go ahead and write these down. We've been writing subscribers down. This is what we usually do. I'm gonna have to go look. See if I can switch to legacy. It'll make it easier for me to look. Here we go. Subs. All right, we're gonna go back and put you all in here. 
spherical. There we go. And then Aries, Aries Gao, 2000. There we go. And then we had the gifted subs from Aries Gao, which are the Lalandi, or wait, the Ladandi. And then, oops, that's it. And gimmick. Seventy-six fifty-two, and then uh, Mr. Otts zero T S, and got one more there. Georgie ninety-one. Did we get that one? Not able to see this last one. Hold on. Oh, we forgot painting cricks gave um, Elric one as well. Elric, did you know that you had a sub? I don't even know if they're still here. All right, we're good. I think that was everybody from today. Which. Super happy you didn't have to go through high school with the name Otto. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a it's not a snake. It's like a scarf. So it's got so this is the different elements of the the model. He's got vines, a kind of a scarf with faces on it, and then he's got lanterns with um you know rope. So there's a lot like a lot going on, and sometimes your best you know, painting less than too much with these kinds of things. Need a little bit more brown in there. Gonna wet blend that brown into that yellow. That's better. Do we need to be, I prefer if you're present to win because we just have so many people watching right now. Um, it's hard to track, especially with so many new people who just entered. We'll see. I kind of feel like a bunch of people entered and then left. I don't know if it's fair to the people who stayed. Um, although it is late, it is getting late in the UK, so I can, under, or in the UK and Europe, so I understand. If it's somebody who I know, I don't mind them. If, if they're like, like Jacob, you're, I know you, I know how to get a hold of you. We're also friends on Facebook, but it'll, it'll be easy. But if it's somebody I don't know, kind of tracking them down makes it hard because sometimes I, I'm unable to track them down um, or they don't get back to me. And then that prize just languishes, right? That's looking good. I like that. Have to run. Yeah, go ahead and run, Jacob. If you win, I'll let you know, okay? It'll be all right. If, if I already know you and you're already a subscriber, subscribers can go ahead and go because I know how to track you down. I've got all your emails from Twitch. Subscribers do not need to be present, but if you're just a follower, I prefer that you stay, stay here and, and see who wins because it's too, it's too difficult to track my my non-subscribers down. I don't have email addresses and stuff where I can reach them easily. You know, right? Okay, so I'm just adding like highlights of yellow, wet blending that in, and it's not the smoothest, but when I sketch it in, I can go back in later. I can add add more colors or more whites or whatever I need. All right. It's kind of like dry brushing. It's over brushing. Sometimes I'm over brushing. 
see what happens when I dry brush. Let's where is I have a this is called a smoosh brush by Rosemary and Company for smooshing. And I'm gonna try to see what happens when I do a little bit of dry brushing with it. I'm gonna put paint on the brush and then wipe most of it off on my paper towel and then let's see what happens here. Ooh. Well, it's nice. What is nice is I can go back in and refine that with my actual brush. Yep, a, bet, a bust I call the grudge. It's Reaper calls it the grudge too. Mad Matter, thank you so much. Ooh, I like that. I like the dry brushing on the faces. That that pops out those faces right away, doesn't it? Um. What I'm going to have to do though is refine it. Because it's not showing up as well as I want it to. All right, let's go back in and refine. Let's rinse out that brush. And by the way, I think you can probably get a cheap makeup brush to do this with if you... Is the brush on my list of products? I don't think so because it's kind of newish. I just got this this past year. And... Um, but yeah, I would say look for a makeup brush that has a rounded tip. Scarf does have faces. Let's look at them. We're going to put a little wash in here in a minute. I've got, I need more ivory on my palette is what I need. Here's this. This is the olive flesh. It's, it's a, it's, it is a type of ivory that's not quite as bright. And what's nice about that is then I can then... Do a second highlight. Yeah, you know why it looks similar to Artis Opus? <laughs> because I, I heard a rumor, and this is totally second, third hand, that Artis Opus are just rebranded Rosemary. So I don't know what the price difference is on the Rosemary, but take a look at that before you buy Artis Opus and see if it's, if, if it's any different. You've only ever used one of those big soft. Yeah, try try it though. All right, so we're gonna go in here on the face. Ooh, gotta paint each one of these little masks. The whole theme behind the King of Death figures is the uh, stone faces. That looks good. I'm just using my side of my brush to hit the highlights. It's it's kind of like a wet dry brush, a wet dry brush, a dry wet brush. And what I can also do is add a little wash to give that a little bit more density in shadows. The wash will also Help me, um, yeah, I like that. The wash will help me give my, oops, see, that's too much. Wipe it off if you get it too much. See, I'll wipe off some of this and then hit those highlights better. There we go. Glasses back on so I can see chat. You use an elf. Yes, that's what I, that's, I've heard elf contouring brushes are really good. They're cheap too. They're not expensive. Elf is a good, it's a good makeup company. Lohad, if you want to enter the raffle, just do exclamation point raffle. 
You got to add the raffle part or else it won't let you enter. Drax, did I get any of the new minis yesterday? Yes, I did. I got four of them. Keep makeup from Vilcos or Target. Okay. Budget store. So I want to, speaking of um, makeup trends and minis, look at this. You guys like that? I just, I put this on the Eldar group that I'm in because I, I, I want to show you what I've done. Hold on a second. I'm going to make a little clip. Um, let's see if I've got, let me find an Eldar. Um, where did my pigment go? The pigment that I use for it is is a uh, makeup pigment for nails. I don't see it on my desk. Dang it, I can't show it to you. Oop. Well, anyway, I can show you here. So this is a color shifting nail art pigment. And all I did was I mixed some gloss varnish with the pigment and I basically made a paint with it and painted it right on. And, and then I added a little bit of the, the, um, the you know, what did I add? Like this dark blue or whatever into the shadows. And how nice did that come out? Looks very space elf, doesn't it? If you like Eldar, that's that's a kind of a cool technique. We have about 25 minutes. Yeah, nail art pigment, nail pigment. What? Let me let me find it. I think it's on the floor with all the other stuff that's on the floor. Floor supplies. Hold on. Actually, I think see, there's there it is. I found it. OK, we can do this. Here it is. All right, let me show this technique to you. I'm going to get a, another Eldar model out. Let me find one with a robe. Here's one. Perfect. Okay, check this out. So to begin with, I already had sort of like a turquoisey background on it. I'll use this. I think I originally had sort of a thousand suns scheme going on, but it wasn't quite working for me. So I just painted normal paint on the Eldar. Get this on here. I'm going to show you how I did these, these pigments. Maybe a little bit of shadows in there. I need to get the, um, this one. Yeah, it is cool and it's fun too. And that's what we're all here for, right? We like fun. All right, a little bit of shadow in there. I don't want it all completely 100% bright. All right, so I got to let this dry. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. This is um, nail art pigment. So these are for fingernails, for, for nail polish, and they're supposed to be meant to be used with resin. So you would mix this with resin. But that's what it looks like to start. And it's not cheap. In fact, I really recommend not doing this and I recommend instead get those color shift paints. Vallejo's coming out with some new color shift paints and I believe Green Stuff World has color shift paints which means that you won't have to mix anything. It's not that expensive compared to this is but I just want to show you what the technique is. Even if even if you never do it yourself I just want you to see that when you open up your mind outside of the mini painting world and you look at other things, you can apply so many things to mini painting and you might discover 
something new just from experimenting, right? So that alone is the reason why this is worth watching is just so that you can learn to be flexible and to learn to, that's already almost dry. All right, so then I'm going to put some gloss into my thing here. You like your green stuff world shifting paints? Yeah. This is, we're going to make our own green, we're going to make our own shifting, shifting paint. Okay. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take a brush. These are little tiny mica fibers. See that? And I'm going to put that into the gloss. And look at this. Hold on, let me put the lid back on. Let me put a little bit more. Ah! I just got some on my thumb. I thought originally that I would be able to um, dust this onto the model, but it doesn't quite work that way. You got to mix it with the medium or with the with the varnish. So I'm going to mix this and look at that crazy. I don't you can't quite see all the purples. Look at yeah, you can see the purple. It shifts from purple to green. Anyway, it's gorgeous. Learning from others is so much quicker. It is. We can all help each other. But look at this beautiful color. It might take a couple layers. Depends on what's underneath, really, because it is a little bit on the transparent side, so. You might have to do more than one layer. But the gloss medium holds it and so so that's the first layer and then let's say I want to use I want to use a little bit of this pigment right on top of it yeah exactly it's good to learn new things and keep your mind open do this there we go that's nice and nice and pigmented this is also something to learn so when you you saw how much pigment was in there and we, we saw that when it was thinner, it wasn't as bright. That's the same thing goes with your paints what, that you buy. So like paints like Army Painter don't have as much pigment in them. So you have to do lots more coats. Look at how pigmented that is. That's so pretty. And there we go. Especially looks good over um, over black because of the the transparency. It kind of makes everything shine. Now I'm going to show you one more thing. Hang on. The bonus is that if you play a grognard, when you win, you not only EDL a girl beat him, but with minis painted with nail polish. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't know what a grognard was. I still don't know what a grognard is. Funny though. But all nail polish is is paint, right? I mean, right? We're all just play. We're all just painting toys. We're all just painting toys, people. All right now, I want to show you one other thing. So now I've got my dark nightshade purple here, and this is flat paint. But if I paint this into the shadows, it's going to make my reflective paints look even more reflective. This is how I paint my true metallic metals too. Put that you know put that in the dark it recesses and that makes it look even shinier have I painted the dung yes the dung beetle night I did with all metallic paints and it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. See that's that pops. I'm gonna do a little bit of blue in this one. 
right in here. Little phalo. And you don't really need to highlight it. It kind of highlights itself. But you might just want to shade down a little bit. If I need to highlight, maybe I'll come back with my original color here. There we go. <laughs> Ragnard is a French word. Oh, what does it mean? It means old man war gamer. <laughs> Shiny, yeah. So this is this is gonna be my new craft world color scheme. I need to I need to learn more about Eldar because I want to have my own craft world. So look at that. There's lots of blues and greens and purples in this. So pretty. So I'm gonna set that aside. These are what are these warlocks? These are warlocks, aren't they? See that one's a little bit darker there. There we go. I'm going to add just a smidge of blue and see. No, see, that doesn't quite work. But the dark blue does. So that's a little tidbit for you. If you want to clip that and save that. How do the pigments compare to the Lumiere paints? Let's take a look. So Cage and Mage is talking about these paints I have called Lumiere by Jacquard, and they are really inexpensive. You can find those on my Amazon um, show she recommends down below. Let me find one of the Lumieres real quick here. Here's one. So this is a good one. So Lumieres are they have some tr uh, interference paints. This one is halo blue gold, so it's going to be similar. I mean, they're going to be different because they're they're for this is formulated. This is actually a fabric paint that I got, but it's it's great. It works great on minis. I've used it. I used it on my dung beetle night. Look at that. Um, let me show you how that swatches out compared. This one has a lot more gold in it. We're going to swatch this right there. See, see how transparent it is in some spots? That's a little transparent. But you can layer it. Okay, so that's, that's the pigment. And I'll tell you what, the name of the pigment is um, from the company. It's Pretty Diva. Pretty Diva Opal. I can't remember the full full name of it, but look up Pretty Deep Diva Opal um, Interference. I think it's inter or sh I can't remember, but so let's look at the this is the Lumiere. Ooh, that's pretty too. I like that too. So it's got like I said, it's got more gold in it, and it's formulated. I guess you know we could highlight. We could highlight with it, couldn't we? What happens? Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. That is so crazy. <gasps> I think I fell in love. Very spacey. Very space elf. I just want to use a little bit of it because I still want to keep my, my green. That's crazy, though. I love that. See if they blend. Oof. That gold is really strong. Yeah, it might be a little too strong. It's cool though. Very cool. I mean, that is going to look killer on a table for sure. Pretty Diva Opal Chrome Nail Powder. Yes. <laughs> Don't you love that name? <laughs> The guys will be like, where did you get that? Pretty Diva Opal Chrome Nail Powder. You know? <laughs> I, I think the Grognards would really enjoy that. Hmm?
Okay, just a little bit. I'll put just a little bit of this. This is the Lumiere. Lumiere by Jacquard. And this one is Halo Blue Gold 556. Five, Light body metallic acrylic. And you can use it on fabric. That's what's also cool. And I, there's a whole bunch of different colors of those. And you, I think I bought, I can't remember how many it was, like eight or ten for nine dollars. I can't remember how many there were in a pack, but they're, they're really inexpensive. The gold in that brings some of the yellows down to, into the cloak. Yeah, I think so. Let me look again. I think it's pretty. I kind of want to keep it. Keep it this other dark blue though. Maybe just just layer it a little bit. There we go. That's perfect. Pretty, pretty, pretty. You should. I'm gonna. I can't. Can't take a picture of it. You'll have to go to my Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash Shoshi's Minis and you can see the picture post that I did of these Eldar because they look even better in the photographs. Yeah. You, the one thing I'm good for is like ticks, tips and tricks, right? <laughs> I am going to use a different dry brush. This is not a good dry brush. This is kind of a Gundam dry brush. So I'm not sure how this is going to work. Try to hit harder, better. Oh, see, that's not better. There was water on the, on the, there was water on it and it just ended up coating it. We can agrax or shade it or something. Now there's too much paint brush. Okay. Hmm. All right. I'm. I'm figuring it out, but I'm not happy with how this looks. Let's try. This, I'm going to get brave. I think I want to try something with a little teal in it. Um, I guess I could. Brown ink. That's the wrong stuff. I think I need to. Let's do the transparents and make a transparent teal. This is the transparent green. And then this is the trans, that's not transparent. Transparent blue. We're gonna make a transparent teal with these two. And maybe a little yellow too. I think your aunt might have a whole set of Lumiere, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> can't, can't tell my Eldar spawn that I'm using fabric paint, she will steal it and use it on squishies. Yes, squishies. <laughs> that is fantastic. I've been seeing, I've been watching these videos of people. Look at that beautiful teal. Can you see that teal? Right. I don't have the best color. All right, I'm going to try this over. Oh yeah, there, oh, I like that. Yeah, I tried it on the vines first. And then now I'm gonna try it on these. See what happens. No promises that it's gonna work. Because it might not. But I love these transparent paints, paints so much. And I think it's, it's doing something anyway. I like that. I think that's that's pretty. There's so much going on on this mini. Yep, yep, yep.
What are the transparent paints? They are from Pro Acryl, their creature caster. If you haven't tried Pro Acryl, you can buy them individually. Um, but the transparent paints are awesome. They're kind of like, uh, they're kind of like, I want to say they're a little bit like contrast paints, but different. They're, they're like, just like a paint. You can see how it's going on. It's almost like a watercolor. It's, it's, and that's what it is. I'm a watercolor, so I love these paints. It's like painting with watercolor. I like that. And it looks like it is going into the crevices nice. I had some GW, um, I think it's Coelia green shade and the blue. Maybe if I mixed, no, it wouldn't work. We'll just keep this. See how it goes. Like sometimes we, we experiment on this channel. Sometimes we're, we don't, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm just mixing on the, on the model. And that's the thing is just be brave. You can fix it if it, if you mess it up. Yeah, it's cool looking. I'm, I really do feel like I need to add one more color though. Your daughter loves getting into your wife's crafting supplies. <laughs> You're taking notes. Good. Bye, evil halfling. I am so glad that you were you came too. I'm really glad that they dropped you here. Reaper is an amazing company. I'm, you know, and it's funny because this isn't my normal stream time, but I think I might change that um, just because it's a little bit easier for me. Orange. I'd say they are, they are similar to inks in that they're transparent, but they behave like paints. Does that make sense? They literally are a transparent paint. And I don't know how, how they work. I mean, I've just only recently started using them, but I love them. Put some on this vine. Um, but the just the pro acryl paints in general are amazing. Just even the regular non-transparent paints are really good. And I've kind of been switching back back and forth between them and Scale 75. Scale 75 have a little bit way much sorry a lot <laughs> bigger learning curve than than the uh, I'd say that pro acryl is real similar to Citadel in a lot of ways. Somewhere between Citadel and P3. Right. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know if I'm going to keep this, but sometimes you make beautiful mistakes and then you have happy accidents, right? They dry, yeah, they dry matte. That's the other thing is that they don't dry shiny like inks. They dry matte. You can see this one is drying matte. And I like that because you get the same trans, you get the transparent effect, but with the matte finish. A little bit more blue in that. Oh, that's really dark. I don't know. I'm going to have to lighten that up. It's always easy to go go darker than it is to go lighter. Whose transparent paints? Uh, those transparent paints look similar to Reaper. Yeah, they're very similar. To, I would call them very similar to the Reaper clears. That's a really good analogy. 
or the war color. I haven't tried war color, but I think you're right. I think that they probably are. But they're always improving their paints too, so. Getting it. I like that dark green. It's really pretty. That kind of greeny feel. Oopsie, that's a lot more. That's okay. Glad Reaper Raid brought you to this channel. Oh, I'm so glad. You know, this is a this is a teaching channel. I'm always teaching. And so if you are here, if you like to just learn and learn to be a better painter this definitely be glad that you followed this channel because we don't just sit and paint we actually I actually show you why I'm doing it how I'm doing it we talk about the process but sometimes the process can be really entertaining and fun too as you can see I'm enjoying this crazy watcher happy accidents <laughs> yeah there's a big um, range of different um, levels of artists on twitch I mean we've got everybody really we've got pros we've got newbies everything but here's the thing, this is the trick. You can learn from anyone, even a brand newbie, because maybe they're experimenting with stuff, maybe they're experimenting with nail art powder, or you know, doing something that you're, you haven't tried, you can still learn something from them. Everybody has individual skits of skills, and no one person is gonna know everything either. Oh, thanks, Bill. <laughs> I like to think I'm nice. I think a lot of the Twitch artists are pretty nice. Kind of hard to have a Twitch channel if you're not nice. I'll say that. All right, I'm just getting this last little bit here. I'm definitely not sure where I'm going with this situation, but I feel like now I can I can go lighter since I've got something going on. So I'm going to go back to my there. Hmm. What if we do? Let's take off take let's take off the uh, glasses. I'm going to very carefully go in and paint these highlights with a very light teal and see what happens. Ooh, I kind of like that a lot. I don't like that a lot. I like it a lot. Also, um, we're going to be doing a paint along tomorrow for those of you guys who, it's going to be subscriber only, but, you know, you'll be able to watch some of it at least. Um, the first four or five minutes, I think, are free. Um, but at least you can get an idea of what, what it's like. And you're welcome to come by. We're going to be doing the paint along from, um, oh, I do like that. Let's go even lighter. 2.30 to 4.30, GMT minus 6, which is... Pretty much the same time as today was. Oh, I like that. Okay. So I think the faces are going to just take a little extra tender care. And I'm going to have to be very kind of slow with them. So 
even lighter. I spent all that time adding that transparent and now we're lightening everything, huh? Give me one second, I'm gonna check, check, check chat. That though. Let's add a little bit of yellow, just see what happens. Transparent, yellow, transparent, orange. That's too much. That's better. Ooh. Ooh, that's going to look really pretty next to those lanterns. I think I'll leave that. I'll leave that there. We kind of got a yellow green theme going here. Need to add. There, we gotta go slowly. We're trying to be rushy. One of the things I'm kind of known for on my channel is painting very quickly, but sometimes I can I can overdo it. All right, let's see. Is it time for the raffle yet? Bye, Envag. All right, let's see who is. Let's see. I think the. Okay, it says you can no longer enter the raffle. But it's time to pick a winner. Let's see. Give me a second. We're going to pick. All right, let's see. Everybody who's here, too late to enter the raffle now. All right, giveaways. Here we go. All right, you ready? We're going to pick a winner. And if you're here, if you're a subscriber, you don't have to be present. It's too late, Drax. It just ended. Are we going to pick? You have no entries. What happened? <gasps> no, did we kill the bot? Did the bot die? Oh, no. What happened? Something happened. I know it didn't. I know drum, no, drum, drum roll did not work. So let's do this. I'm so sorry. Everybody who's in, something happened with the bot. Let's try, um, let's try picking a winner again. It doesn't, ha it says I have no entries. I don't know how that happened. Try this again. We're going to try this again. See if you can enter. No, this is bad. If, if it doesn't work, what I'm going to do is I'll use my other bot. See, it's not, it's not adding. Okay, here, hold on. It's not adding anybody. I'm going to use my other bot, and we're just going to pick a random person. Is that okay? Everybody will get a chance. My other bot is sometimes way better. All right. We're just going to do a, ra a regular thing here. So let me. Oh, it's not gonna let me. Take it. Oh, stupid, stupid. My bots are both being dumb. Okay, let me see if I can do it in this bot. Give me a second here. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna figure this out. Current giveaway. Nope. I'm going to do a custom. Bear with me. I can make this work. I can make this work. You have to give away. I'm going to edit this because I don't know why that didn't work. Let's try this. Let's do zero. Let's change things. I'm sorry, guys. I will make this work. Okay. 
save giveaways. Um, Reaper broke a couple of times as well. Yeah, it did. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. So try, somebody try to enter the raffle now and let's see. Just send it to you. Problem solved. <laughs> Okay, good. Now it's entering. Cajun Mage just entered. Everybody. Okay, good. It's working. Um, and as soon as everybody gets entered, everybody just gets one ticket, though. That's the only thing. Okay. There are about 119 people watching. So right now we have 46, seven tickets. Okay, good. This is working. We'll still do this. We can do this. We're just going to take less time to do this. <laughs> now we know for sure people are going to be present to win, right? Okay. I'm going to give everybody, until I stop, start seeing it really slow down, We're at 51 people. The bot is catching up. Good. <laughs> what a crazy day. It has been a crazy day. All right, good. Maha's in there. Everybody's in there. Lady War, good. Awesome. The eight fourteen punk in there, good. Good. Holly Monsters here. Hi. <laughs> All right, we're just gonna. We got fifty four people entered. I'm waiting to see if Holly Monster's name show up on the list because I'm not seeing it. Yeah, everyone type exclamation point raffle now. That's the way you do it. Hi, Biggie Snacks. Bulos, good morning. Put ex Bulos, type exclamation point raffle. Some of my Australian friends are wa waking up. Uh oh, I think. Oh no, good. We got. More people. Good. Bolus just entered. Awesome. This is working. Did you get in, comrade? Corey, let me check. Yep, I see you, comrade. Yep, yep, yep. If you already entered, yeah, Amberton, I see you're already in. So don't enter again. Quick before the Aussies wake up. <laughs> what do you mean he's not allowed to win anymore? That he can win. <laughs> What's the prize? It is, hold on, I will show you. It is this bust called the, um, the Grudge. It's from Reaper Miniatures. We had a massive raid from Reaper Miniatures, so I thought that it would be really appropriate. So he's a dwarf bust. He's called the Grudge. And that's the winner. I know. Oh, my God. You're going to win it. Somebody's going to win it. I like it. Oh, my God. <laughs> You guys are entering. You don't even know what you're going to win. <laughs> you're like, raffle. What am I going to win? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win a bag of dog poop. Yay. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> my shirt, my shirt says, hold on. It's got Leia and then it's got Kylo and some cookies. And it says, they had cookies. So I can't remember what the reference is, but it's funny. Free stuff, free stuff, free stuff. All right, are we all done? Are we, are we all entered? I think we've got 60 people entered. Yes, the fun of, the fun of entering something is fun. It's, it is a blast. Love Kylo. You have a life-size cutout of him. See, I'm a Han fan, so I like his daddy. <laughs> I'm a huge Han Solo fan. Not liking you? Hey, Shizu, you got to be a follower. 
if you're not a follower, you can't enter. There's another shirt where Darth offers Luke cookies. Yes, that must be what it's from. Han Kyle. Oh, you're in? Okay, good. J Jacob, did you get in? Who you are? Let me check. Hmm. We have 61 people. I don't know. It may, maybe it, let me check and see if you're on the list. Sometimes the bot has to catch up a little bit. Shizu, try, try exclamation point raffle with a lowercase r. Come to the dark side, we have cookies. That's what's fun. Try it one more time. Okay. It might take a minute. The bot is acting weird today. I do have to say that. I mean, because before it wasn't accepting anybody. Yeah, I'm not seeing you being added to the list either. I don't know why. Because it's not a subscriber giveaway. It's a, it's a follower giveaway. Yeah. Just redo it Monday again. Do it Monday, but I don't want to give it away today. We will be having another giveaway on the 16th for subscribers. I will say that. We're going to be giving away this um, Redgrass Games um, ergonomic handle for miniature painting, which looks just like this. This is the prototype that I got, and you can turn your thing. This is what we're going to give away for our 16th, on the 16th. So stick around for that on the 16th. <laughs> 61, the last raffle you participated in, there were only 17 entries. This is getting more and more difficult to win. But yay for Shoshi, you deserve all the subs and followers. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pick because I, for whatever reason, the bot is not adding any more people. Oh, good, your Bissell. Yeah, the turtle. I did have the turtle. Isn't he cute? All right, let's go ahead and pick. We're going to close entries. I can't do a random number generator because I don't have a way of picking. All right, entries are closed. Pick a winner. Cy Martini, are you here? Got to be here to be to win, Cy Martini. Whoa, where's Cy Martini? Ah, <gasps> you won the bust. So message me, Cy Martini. You can message me on Facebook at Shoshi's Minis, or you can message me on Twitch, whichever one is easier for you. In fact, let me see if I can add you right now as a friend so that you can whisper me easily. Okay. And yes, congrats. And I will send that out. Shipping's already paid for. It's ready to go. And it doesn't matter where you live. I will send it anywhere in the world. Okay, while we are congratulating, I'm going to look for somebody awesome to hand off to because it is that time. It is time for me to go get dinner and time for some of you for bed, right? All right, we are going to raid Next Level Painting. How's that? You guys like him? He's good. He's good. Okay. Down some of the black and gray. I hope he I hope he appreciates us. We'll give him lots of spam, okay? Lots of spam. All right, last thing here. Quickly. There we go. Stay with me. We're gonna do a cool raid. We're gonna do mad love from Shoshi's Minis when we get to his channel, okay? There we go. And we're going to go check out Next Level Paintings. He's probably painting some cool. I will see you guys on Monday. Uh, no, Saturday. I will see you Saturday from 2.30 to 4.30 GMT by 6. We're going to do a sub-only paint-along. All right, bye, guys.